My phone is telling me I have a Zoom meeting at seven o'clock. That's great. <laughs> All right, so we should be live on Facebook. Let me get that screen away. There's like five different screens on my phone here. Okay, I have about five or six people in the audience I'm letting in here. You all can hear me, right? Yes, thumbs up that you can hear me. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. It's so quiet. It's crazy. I love it. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't hear a single sound. It's like, can everybody hear me? I just want to make sure. Um, I'm going to wait here maybe just another minute, um, and then we'll get started. Let me let these people in. Um, and we are live on Facebook now as well. Yay, I can see my face on the phone. Wonderful, wonderful. I was just posting a wonderful article um, that News Channel 5 did on our building. So if you get a chance, I'll probably post it on Ensemble's website as well. People are sharing it on the social medias, which is kind of neat. Um, the building that we're in, we're trying to solidify it for some years to come, which is really exciting. My phone is taking a second to catch up with me here. Bear with me and then we'll get started here, everyone. Come on, phone. There we are. Okay. The news channel five did there it is. Voice. When I can hear my voice and then I mute my phone, I know we're in good shape. Wonderful. So now I have both of my, I feel like a, like a stockbroker. I have two screens going on here. It's great. Um, without further ado, welcome all um, to this, our 10th. So we're on number 10 now. That's crazy. Um, our 10th of our Zoom reading series. Um, this is just a series of short plays um, that come out of our stage rights unit. Um, this is a unit that meets every Wednesday night uh, via Zoom right now while we social distance um, and can't be in person. Um, but it's a group of playwrights uh, that would normally come in person to ensemble every Wednesday. Um, and it's just an opportunity to share each other's pages, read each other's work, uh, put an actual person to a, a character rather than seeing it just on the page. Um, in terms of words on a page, uh, you get an opportunity to hear your scripts read out loud. Um, and so amid COVID, I actually found out that Zoom was meeting, um, that Stage Rights was meeting via Zoom um, as we were navigating kind of the whole shutdown. Um, and so I was uh, pleased to hear from Agnes and Cindy um, that they were still meeting via Zoom, which was great. And then out of that meeting came these this opportunity to present these wonderful 10-minute uh, plays. And so this is now our 10th, we're doing them every other Monday um, and this is our 10th Monday. And I'm hoping that maybe in the summer or the early fall, we'll be doing stuff in person again. I feel like every time we feel like we have a marker, something changes a little bit. Uh, Dr. Fauci said we might be wearing masks through 2022. It's gonna be something that we're probably all gonna have to get used to eventually anyway, um, but just really a great opportunity to stay connected um, in this crazy time and share each other's works. Um, some really wonderful and talented playwrights that we have in this group, um, all local, which is fantastic. Um, we've, we've toyed with the idea of maybe bringing in other scripts. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, um, but maybe someday we will. Um, so that's possibility, but I think right now we're just gonna stay, we've got such a rich um, group of people um, and they have plenty of material that they're providing here in Cleveland. Um, if you have no sound, um, that could be your personal computer. It looks like somebody in the in the chat put that they don't have sound. I have everybody muted, so you should be able to hear me, but then I can't hear any of you, which is great. Um, but if you have no sound, you might wanna look um, and see. Um, usually if it's a, uh, an Apple computer, your sound is on the top bar. And if it's a Microsoft, like if it's a non-Apple computer, your, your bar on the bottom will show what looks like a little speaker and you might be able to turn that on and off. Um, my other recommendation might be to leave the Zoom um, and then come right back in because sometimes Zoom does have a little bit of a glitch where you can't hear and that solves that problem quite easily if you just leave the Zoom and you come right back in. Um, so I think we're good. I don't have anybody else who is trying to join via the Zoom audience. So I'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, we have a good audience too here on Facebook, which is great. I have two more people I'm letting in here really quickly, um, and then I will introduce our first script. 
Um, and then what I'll do everyone is I'll share in the chat, uh, the links to like the page that gives you all the information on this 10 minute series, um, our link to our website. So you can learn a little bit more about Ensemble. If you don't know us already, a lot of our audience members are returning um, either people who have subscribed and missed us or um, have come to these 10 minute Zooms prior. But if you're new to Ensemble, welcome. If you're of course not welcome back, we love you. Um, but I'll share links um, in the chat that'll help you kind of direct you to where all the information centers are. So without further ado, let me introduce our first playwright and um, she will not only be um, the writer of this piece, she is performing it as well, um, the lovely Agnes Herman. You can unmute, oh, well, yes, your video is already on. If you wanna unmute yourself. <laughs> um, and if you wanna tell us a little bit about your play and it's Precipitous. Yes. Um, if you would like to tell us a little bit about your play Precipitous, kind of like um, I prompt them all to tell a little bit uh, about why they wrote their piece. Um, and then I would say introduce your audience. I mean, introduce your actors, but you are your own actor. So <laughs> Agnes, the stage is yours. <laughs> Okay, my <laughs> piece is entitled Precipitous. Um, Precipitous. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, it's, uh, it's a story of um, uh, my giving birth to my son. Uh, and I wrote it because uh, many people, uh, when I would uh, relate the story, said, my goodness, you should write that down. So um, I did, uh, and um, surprisingly, I found out that um, there are other women that have gone through this, just like me, which I hadn't known before. So that was kind of nice. Um, so at any rate, here we go. It was 1.35 a.m. I just finished reading and turned off the light. Paul was already asleep. The minute I shut my eyes, I felt the tiniest twinge. So I got up to pee. I saw blood, but the doc said, if I saw blood, it was just my mucus plug breaking and it meant nothing. Then I had a cramp, just like a menstrual cramp. So I made some tea and started doing the Times crossword. Five minutes later, I had another cramp. Then I had to poop. The doc said I shouldn't call him until my water broke. Then my water broke. I cleaned it up and woke Paul. I think I'm in labor. Oh, Angie, we should call the doctor. You do it, hon. I have to puke. I puked. So I got on my hands and knees and cleaned that up too. Suddenly, the pain was so intense. I thought I was ripping apart. Paul was wonderful. He called the doctor who was at his farm upstate. He told us to meet him at the hospital. Paul called the car service and grabbed my back. In a few minutes, we left Queens and headed for Mount Sinai in Manhattan. I was doing the panting like I learned in Lamaze. The young man driving the car kept asking if I was okay. He was probably petrified I'd give birth in the back seat. It was snowing. Thank God it was in the middle of the night or we'd have been stuck in rush hour traffic and I would have given birth in the car. Pain was unbearable. Oh, oh, I started moaning while I panted. There was no relief. When do I get to take a deep cleansing breath, damn it? They said I'd have time for a cleansing breath. Somehow, we miraculously reached the hospital in 30 minutes. Was there someone with a wheelchair to meet me like they said it in my freaking orientation? Of course not. We went in the building, got on the elevator. When the doors opened, I puked again. The nurses said, that's normal with precipitous labor. Precipitous? Normal? I could barely walk. I was bent over at the waist in pain. And then I yelled, oh my God, I have to push. They walked me toward the labor room while I literally peeled off my clothes and threw them to Paul. I got on the table. The intern said, I have to do an internal exam. Oh, no, you don't, I have to push. I was so angry, I saw red, but somehow he got his grubby little hand in there and announced, you're ready, go ahead and push. I know I'm ready. I pushed, no relief. My doctor hadn't arrived. The resident came in and said the baby was crowning. She said I was doing great and to push again whenever I was ready. I pushed again. 
nothing. When does the pain stop? <laughs> Shit, I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> the doc said, we're going to do an episiotomy now. I'll cut into some tissue so you won't tear yourself and the pain will get better. Yes, <laughs> cut me, <laughs> cut me. <laughs> she did. I didn't feel a thing except another push coming on. I pushed and suddenly the doc said, there's the head. Finally, relief. I got to take my first cleansing breath. Oh my God, I feel so much better. I was ready for a nap. The doc said, you're gonna be wanting to push again. Sure enough, more pain, another push. The shoulders emerged. Oh wow, I feel great. Can I take a nap now? No, not yet. You still have at least one more push. Really? Are you sure? I feel fine. Ah, another pain. Another push. Oh, baby. 3.47 a.m., the doc said. Here's your baby boy. I didn't get to see a thing. Paul, did you see? What was it like? But Paul was sitting in a chair where he was told to place his head between his legs so he wouldn't faint. Would you like to cut the cord, Papa? Paul said, uh, no, I don't think I can. He was crying. It was so precious. Cord cut. Why isn't the baby crying? I asked. We're just cleaning him up and putting him under a heat lamp. Wow, the nurses were pounding on my stomach to release the afterbirth and my baby was getting a spa treatment. <laughs> 10 seconds later, our son cried. He was wrapped in a blanket and put in my arms. I was in awe. He seemed fascinated with the bright lights. And then his little mouth opened and his little tongue started licking his lips. Like an old man with no teeth who wanted something to eat. And no, I didn't breastfeed because I had no milk. I didn't even leak after he was born. And don't you dare make me feel guilty for that. If I hear the La Leche League one more time, I will scream. He fed off me long enough. It's not like he starved. He had such a big head. No wonder it hurt so much. For the longest time, we called him Brunswick, like the bowling ball, until his body caught up with his head. The doc said that I'd been through precipitous labor and if I got pregnant again, they'd bring me to the hospital before my due date because second babies usually come even quicker. <laughs> this way they could give me Pitocin to induce labor while I was already in professional hands. At that moment, I decided one was enough. The end. Yay, good job Agnes, woo! That was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, yes, as, as, as pleasant as I'm sure giving birth, I'm not saying I know it from personal experience yet, but um, as pleasant as giving birth could be, that was a great exploration of um, a very dramatic, you know, drama is you take really good material and you write, uh, you know, stuff based on, you know, some really good topics. And pregnancy is definitely a great topic uh, to write a play about Agnes as usually wonderful wonderfully acted by Agnes yes yeah. you have a very like keen ability to go from very serious to very funny as well so even in your writing I think that probably stems from your acting as well but watching you go from very serious to total like sarcastic is very fun <laughs> um that truly was that truly was great Agnes takes me back to those days from Ife love the opening and the range of emotions Agnes from Kyle so our fellow stage rates um, actors and or writers. Sublime from Anne. It's been a while. I heard a great monologue by Agnes, Her Agnes Herman from Tim Collinwood. Hi, Tim. It's good to see you. We haven't seen you in a while. Um, that was absolutely superb, Agnes. I think um, Precipitous is still better than my two. Wow, 25 and a half hours. I loved your performance. A long time. That is apparent. Yes. Yeah. So see, look, we can all kind of bond in some very interesting experiences in life. Drama is conflict in life. So that's great. You know, that we, we have an opportunity to share with one another. Um, I forgot to mention, but you guys picked it up pretty quickly when I mentioned it in the chat. If you guys want to use that chat function to share your feedback 
We, I usually share it in between the readings, um, but feel free to type them up um, if you want to while they're reading as well. And I will share them with everybody else, um, as well as our um, Facebook audience. Very well done from Janet Dodrell. Um, they tend to get a little bit two minutes behind us, so there's a slight delay. <laughs> um, but I'll go ahead and share both comments, uh, either via Zoom or uh, Facebook with everybody um, in between each reading. She is a superb actress, that is for sure. Very talented. She's got a very wide range to do quite a few things. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> from, from, from bugs to, you know, got, I've, we, one of these days too, we have to do your, a reading of your, the mafia play because that was also hilarious. Um, your really ability. I do. I love that's one of my favorites. Because no. um, you're you're acting in it. It's hilarious. I mean, you're you're vocal, so you could be a voice actor. You could do all kinds of things. The sky is the limit with Agnes. That is for sure. Okay. Um, really enjoyed it from Cynthia. It's wonderful. So, um, without further ado, we will work on move on to our next piece. So, Agnes, you're more than happy to mute yourself unless you're involved, which I don't think you are. Um, for a chance. Agnes does everybody's pieces, like that's also too, because she's wonderful. Um, if you are involved in Rannigan's play, if you wanna turn on your video and your sound, um, and then I will introduce our lovely playwright, uh, Rannigan Walsh, and she will tell you a little bit about why she wrote the script and introduce you to her wonderful actors. Um, so Rannigan has been around for quite some time as well. Uh, we produced one of her scripts, uh, A Kind of Courage, which was about um, human trafficking, a really great play that was part of our uh, Columbia New Place Festival. I can't remember what exact year, but um, uh, Rannigan, if you want to take the stage, I'm going to remove the spotlight on myself. And you want to tell everybody a little bit about why you wrote Salon on S Street and introduce your wonderful cast. And then we'll uh, get on with the next script. So uh, uh, Rannigan, the stage is yours. OK, hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Salon on S Street uh, was written seven years ago. Ensemble uh, was um, very focused on the Harlem Renaissance that um, early spring and asked uh, the workshoppers to write 10 minute pieces about the Harlem Renaissance. And I found this wonderful woman, Georgia Douglas Johnson online, um, and that she was a writer and a poet during the Harlem Renaissance, and I'd never heard of her, so I read a lot about her, and I wrote a fiction, this is a fictional piece, but it has a lot of facts about her life. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ed Walsh, who will read the stage directions, and, um, and tell you a little bit more about Georgia Douglas Johnson and Salon on S Street. Salon on S Street, a 10 minute play by Rannigan Walsh. The characters are played by Jean Madison as Georgia Douglas Johnson, Kyle Carthens as Henry Lincoln Johnson Jr., Isaiah Betts as Peter Douglas Johnson. Georgia Douglas Johnson's house at 1461 South Street Northwest in Washington, known as the S Street Salon. 40 years of weekly Saturday S Street Salons provided a place for African-American artists to meet, socialize, discuss their work and exchange ideas. Maya Angelou's poem, The Cage Bird Sings is based on Johnson's poem the heart of a woman. Scene one, September 1935 in Washington, DC, in the kitchen of Georgia Douglas Johnson. There is one door that connects to the living room where guests can be heard talking and laughing. There are glasses and trays of food on the kitchen table. Georgia is pouring drinks and cutting up small sandwiches for the guests. Henry enters the kitchen with an empty tray. Mama. Mr. Boyd's just arrived. Oh, that's wonderful. I want to talk to him about my new play. Um, I don't think he's looking for plays right now. Henry, 
just because you volunteer at the NAACP doesn't mean you know everything that goes on there, especially about the magazine. Why, I already had a couple poems published in it. Mr. Du Bois likes my work. I didn't get a chance to tell you, Mama, but um, I've been helping out with the magazine, The Crisis, and well, they already mapped out the next three issues and no plays in any of them. But I talked to Mr. Du Bois about my lynching play, Blue-Eyed Black Boy. Maybe he forgot. Now we've been celebrating over at the NAACP. The lynchings have almost stopped. Almost isn't good enough. Even one's too many. Well, they're doing more important stories. Thurgood Marshall's been representing the NAACP in that law school discrimination case, Murray versus Pearson. We're hoping to publish an article on that in the crisis once he wins. Well, I'm glad they're going to write about this separate but equal nonsense, but that doesn't mean lynching stories should be put aside. They've been going on since before I was born. Still no protection under the law. People gotta talk about this. Things are changing, mama. It's better to work through Congress than to be screaming about injustice and just getting people all riled up. Have you lost your mind? How do you think laws get made? This injustice needs to be shouted from the mountaintops. I wrote Blue-Eyed Black Boy as a message to Congress, but if the crisis won't publish it... Peter enters the kitchen and puts on a serving apron. Okay, you two, stop arguing and let's celebrate my decision. After graduation, I'm heading to New York, <laughs> going to Harlem where all the music is. I know what daddy would say about that. He tell you to find a real profession before you take time out for music. Besides, the Harlem Renaissance really slowed down since the depression. God rest your daddy's soul. And I know he wants what's best for both of you, but nothing could make me happier than Peter going to Harlem. That's where everything starts. How I miss it. And Peter, how are you ever gonna graduate when you can't even get to the Saturday night salon in time? Mama and me been doing this all by ourselves. I had to take Mama's dog, so, stray dog out for a walk. He slept in my room last night and I think he's got fleas. Another stray? Mama, how many times are you gonna bring strange animals home? We don't have time to be cleaning up and feeding them. Not just the stray animals. On Monday, I found a strange man sleeping on the cot in my room. Thought he might have fleas too. So I slept on the couch. God blessed us with this nice house with lots of extra room. And we have a responsibility to share it with the less fortunate. That man happens to be a poor, but very bright writer. He just made a mistake when he went to your room. I already moved him to the attic. How long is he staying? Who keeps telling people about our house? As soon as one leaves, another shows up. Remember how mama used to make us all call the strays uncle? The one I liked was Uncle Joe. He was here for two months, ate all our food, and then we never saw him again. I bet mama doesn't even remember him. I like to encourage people with talent. It doesn't matter if they move on and I don't recall their names. And Henry, you're just missing out by staying in DC. I'm gonna meet Duke Ellington. Maybe even get to play with him. I can feel it in my bones. Daddy always said you were a dreamer. You need to be able to support yourself. Mama can't take care of us forever. Besides, when did mama ever make money from music? You seem to have forgotten that I went to Oberlin College, one of the finest music schools there is. So don't you go discouraging your brother. Peter has talent, even more than me. If it weren't for your newspaper column and that government job, there'd have been no money for law school. That's right. And it's the Saturday Nighters that helped me get hired at the Department of Labor. They put the idea in President Coolidge's head. And that's what paid for the educations in this house. Too bad I don't have it anymore. The point is, your music talent ain't paying the bills. And all the Saturday nighters coming here just for the food and the drink. Men have a better chance in music. People can go far. And that's why he needs to go to Harlem. The only place I get to perform is in churches. Mama, can we get moving? I'm in a hurry tonight. Peter leaves the room with a tray of food. He comes back right away laughing. 
<laughs> Henry, that man from the attic is walking around talking to all the ladies in daddy's bathrobe. <laughs> oh dear. I told him he could wear your father's clothes for the salon, but I guess he got mixed up. Peter, take him back upstairs and get him dressed. I want him to meet Mr. Du Bois. And here, Henry, can you please take more of the bourbon out? Mr. Du Bois gave me that the last time he was here. Peter and Henry leave. Georgia is slicing the cake. Henry returns. Mama, some of those women out there getting in an argument with Langston Hughes about women's rights. Okay, okay, I'm taking the cake out. Langston loves my cake. Georgia exit, Peter enters. Now, Peter, don't think I'm trying to run your life, but think about law school. You just wanna put me in a cage like daddy did to mama. What are you talking about? Remember mama's poem, The Heart of a Woman? Forget about poetry and music. You need to have a career. The heart of a woman falls back with the night and enters some alien cage in its plight and tries to forget it has dreamed of the stars while it breaks, breaks, breaks on the sheltering bars. Daddy just tried to protect mama so she wouldn't work so hard. Georgia re-enters. I wonder where I'd be if I lived in New York. Maybe one of my lynching plays would be playing in New York right now. Well, after I make it big, you can come and live with me, and we'll get one of your plays published. Henry listens at the door. Langston Hughes was talking to Mr. Du Bois, and somebody just said, where's the lady poet? They like your poetry, mama. If you have to write, just stick to the poems. You are your father's son. I used to hear the same tone in his voice. He never did take kindly to my writing. I'm just trying to keep you from being disappointed, mama. You need to talk to Langston Hughes, Henry. He likes to tell stories the way they really happen, just like me. He practically started the Harlem Renaissance. Oh, I know all about Langston Hughes, and I respect the man. But nobody wants women talking about the ugly stuff. Daddy always said you were stubborn. <laughs> I'm beginning to see why. Henry takes a tray of sandwiches and excess. Are we done? I've got exams to study for. You can't leave yet. It's only one night out of your week. This salon is wearing us all out, especially you. Maybe if you was working again, you wouldn't have time for the salon. Can't you get your column back? I'll tell all my friends how your column was in 20 papers. I'm done writing those columns about Negro life. They made us sound like we got no problems. I want to spend my time on the things that need changing, show how hard things are. But things are looking up for our people. You heard, Henry. Time for you to change, too. You think things change? Still divided on race from what I see. When the Ku Klux Klan marched down Pennsylvania Avenue right after your daddy died, I decided to start the salon. This is a place for Negroes to meet for as long as this country is divided on race. But well, that could take a long time. And that's why the salon going to keep meeting. Henry returns with an empty tray. Mr. Du Bois just said he's making me the assistant to the person in charge of the Crisis Magazine. Now that's a real job, Mama. Oh, happy day. Now my play's getting published. Well, that depends. What do you mean? Only if it has a happy ending and no lynching. Come on, Henry, give in for once. How about a poem instead? Even my own son. I'm just saying what I know daddy would say. It's not just the plays. Mama has a lot of people talking about our family. Now I know daddy'd be upset. Our neighbors haven't forgotten that mama was serving alcohol during prohibition. Nothing came of it and prohibition is over. I've invited neighbors to the salon many times. The door is open to everyone. That's how we find talented artists. You say that, but a couple people got mad at you because you wouldn't let them come back to the salon? I only send away people who don't have talent. I want people here interested in what's going on. And what about the Negro man in Florida who was lynched not too long ago? Sometimes those reports turn out to be false. Besides, that's the first lynching I heard of in a long time. What'd he do? 
He stole a chicken. They wouldn't lynch a person for that. You'd be surprised how many people are lynched for nothing. Progress, moving forward, that's the real message of the Harlem Renaissance. No, it's about Negro artistic expression. That's the new Negro. And don't sugarcoat it with your looking forward attitude. It includes the past, all of it. Uh, I've read plays about lynchings that didn't put fear into people like yours do. People need to know our pain, Henry. And I bet the ones you're talking about all were written by men. Now you're just being contrary. Peter's right. You'd like to put me back in that cage, Henry. I'm just trying to keep daddy's spirit alive. Peter walks over and hugs his mother. Henry picks up a tray of drinks and walks out. I'm proud of you, mama. Maybe you just need to get them published somewhere else. Maybe I need to submit under that pen name I used. I know Henry's only over at the NAACP until he graduates from law school. Maybe you can submit them again after he leaves. I don't like to plot against my own son, but you may be right. I guess I'll start sending the plays elsewhere. What was that pen name? Oh, I remember. John Temple, the one that got published. It was called Plumes. Peter looks out to the living room. Mama, from the looks of the crowd, we better make a couple more trays of food. People are still coming in. We still have these candied nuts. Everyone loves them. Henry re-enters. Georgia hands Peter the candied nuts. People are asking for the lady poet. I hope you have something ready. And the man in the attic is saying he has something to read. Are you sure you want him to read? God only knows what might come out of his mouth. Of course he can read. He has talent. He just doesn't know how to dress. Well, I have to go upstairs and find a poem to read. Georgia takes off her apron. Both Henry and Peter take off their aprons. Now, I want you two to get out there and talk to our guests. And Henry, I can promise you this. I will continue to write plays, and especially about lynching. The only thing that will ever be sugarcoated in this house is the nuts we serve every Saturday night at the Saturday night salons. End of play. Yay, wonderful job. I'm gonna echo the very first um, comment. The cast are great. What a wonderful cast of actors. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Isaiah, I've never met you. Very nice to meet you. You did a wonderful job. Um, thank you, Rannigan. Um, let me read some of the feedback here. I'm trying to undo the spotlight here so we can see. Um, I was making Agnes a co-host just in case my internet went out. Um, wow, Rannigan, the way you take the history and then you put it all into a drama. Amazing. We appreciate it so much. The actors were wonderful. Thank you so very much. Um, yes, Randy, you presented the exposition beautifully integrated it into a play. Very organic. From Agnes, your three actors were perfect. Loved the humor. Yes, you did that very well, uh, Rannigan. You guys all acted the moments very well, too, I have to say. Very authentic, Rannigan. This should go to the women's history group in the area. Yep, very, very good suggestion. Agreed. Um, very good. Enjoyed the writing and the acting. I loved the historic context, Rannigan. Wonderful piece um, from Mary. Um, Cynthia, great, great job. Really, very, for such a short play, it's, it's amazing how much material people can get into such a short script. Um, the 10 minute play is a short form, but it's surprising how many poignant moments and you know things that you can put into such a short scene um was very good nice conflict good job Rannigan from Ife unique enlightening and excellently presented Rannigan that was great writing from Anne such a supportive group here I love how supportive all the writers are of each other too I just want to say that um always some I wonderfully positive thank you Thank you to the oh. actors. They did a fabulous job. Thank you. They do. And Thanks. that's something that's wonderful. Yes. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, G. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you, Agnes. There's a difference between reading a script on a page and then actually hearing an actor like give it life and thought and emotion. And so that's what's been really wonderful about, you know, stage rights is you get that opportunity, even if it's you sitting with your fellow you know, playwrights, which most of the time on Wednesdays, it's them reading each other's scripts. 
you know, getting to hear a person give that person life is, is a whole nother, it gives the playwright a whole nother level of, of their play, like landing on them and their feelings. And then they go through all of that process in writing a script. So really, um, you know, bringing those characters to life is so helpful. Um, excellent, Gene, Kyle, and Isaiah from Tim Conwood. And Ed for the stage directions, good job. Got to give Ed some props there for the stage directions. Um, and then Rannigan says again, thank you, wonderful actors. Wonderful. I don't know if we got any. Thank you both lively and, oh, both lively and heartfelt from Janet Dodrell. Wonderful. So a couple of uh, comments that come in via Facebook. I did share the link um, for the 10 minute plays. Um, I will do that again uh, as we do our last piece here too. But that page kind of keeps you up to date just to let everybody know on what plays we'll be reading. Um, there's, there's kind of a way that we wanna further this project into something a little bit more, but that's still in the works. So once we've hashed out the total body, it's kind of a skeleton right now. But once I put a little bit of flesh on it, um, we'll announce how we kind of want to take these all maybe just a little bit st a step further. Um, but once I've fleshed out that whole idea into a coherent press release, I will let everybody know what's going on. Um, we will be having a couple of short plays um, that we're doing in partnership with Broadway On Demand at the very beginning, beginning of April. So I'll be probably sharing that information the next Monday um, because I will have all that data to share with you as well. And they are also short plays um, because I'm finding that Zoom can be very helpful in the short play niche. Um, I feel like this is our sweet spot right now is the short play, not too long. Um, we will possibly be doing a longer play um, at the very beginning of May. That again, these details are almost completely hashed out. So once we get all that stuff, um, determined and we have exact dates and times, I will share that with everybody. Join our mailing list, our email list, because that's gonna get e-blast. Um, or you can just email plays at ensemble hyphen theater with an re.org. And then we'll, with your email address and we'll uh, pop you on our email. Um, and a lot of those updates will get sent via email as well. But always use our website because we're gonna update that with all of the programming that we're navigating. Cause I can say, trying to produce during COVID has been very interesting to say the least. I think we're planning and I knock on wood doing stuff maybe outside in the summer in a limited capacity and then opening back up in person in the fall. But again, that's still kind of a what if, um, but that's ideally the plan and we'll, we'll hopefully be able to do that um, should this vaccination effort continue to go well and the cases keep dropping um, and the numbers uh, get to where we all need them so that we can all be back in person again. Um, so just wanted to let you know, I will continue to share our website and of course the website that's dedicated just to these 10 minute plays. Using that link as a reference is really um, the most helpful because it's gonna be the most up-to-date information. Also feel free to join our mailing list um, and we'll share information with you that way as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you all had that link um, to know that that's where you can go to get more data. It'll also have a little bit more information on the playwrights as well, um, their wonderful bios. So we will move on to our final piece for the evening. Um, if you, Ed, so thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you, Jean. If you guys wanna stay and watch, um, but if you wanna turn off your sound, that would be great. You can keep your video on if you want to. We love your beautiful faces, but if you could mute yourselves, um, and then Ed, if you want to tell us a little bit about your piece, um, mm -hmm. so you guys don't have to do much changing because you're in the same little, what do you call it? Hollywood square box, Brannigan? I love that. Hollywood square box. <laughs> it's your Hollywood square box. Um, I'm going to spotlight you here, Ed. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is kind of like doing theater through Hollywood squares, which was a very successful show. So that's totally okay. Um, Ed, if you want to tell it. It was, yes. You want to tell everybody a little bit about your play um, and introduce sure. your wonderful uh, actors? I'm happy to tell someone a little bit about my play. Uh, and it's we'll entitled Switzerland Thinking, and it actually uh, is a product of the conversation I had with a friend of mine one day who uh, suddenly said, Oh, I've got to run. I said, Why? He said, I have to go see my grandmother. I said, Oh, how nice. He said, Yes. She asked for a very special gift. And I said, well, what is it? And uh, I'm not going to reveal that because that's part of what this play is all about. But it was a special gift and he did leave. Whether he delivered it, I'm really not sure. 
Wishful Thinking by Edward J. Walsh. Characters, Estelle Wentworth, physically challenged, mentally alert. She is the aunt of Jesse Wentworth and is about to celebrate her 80th birthday. Being played by Chris Courtney. Jesse Wentworth, at 45 years of age, Jesse is down on his luck and wears clothes appropriate for a tractor pull. Being played by Benjamin Joseph Gregg. Stage directions being read by Rannig and Walsh. Setting, a table with two chairs in the room in which Estelle Wentworth lives at the nursing home. The time is the present. Act one, scene one. At rise, Estelle Wentworth sits hunched at a table. A cane rests at her side. A cupcake sits on a small plate in front of her together with a knife, fork, and napkin. And a second plate, empty, is on the opposite side of the table, also with a knife, fork, and napkin. Jessie Wentworth sits on that side of the table where a small gift wrap package rests at his elbow. He is dressed in jeans, a working man's shirt, and has not removed his jacket or his cap, which he tugs at frequently. I appreciate the chocolate cupcake, Jesse, but did you bring a candle? I asked for a candle, remember? Oh, yeah, I got a whole box of birthday candles, matter of fact. <laughs> Jesse removes the box of birthday candles from Just his jacket one will do. and hands them across the table. Just one will do. I, I hope you didn't get those trick candles, the kind you can't blow out. <laughs> At my age, I can't afford to waste the breath. Nah, just regular birthday candles. <laughs> and a match. I... I need a match. They don't trust us to have matches in here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a whole pack of matches. Uh, keep them if you want. <laughs> uh, would you mind lighting and putting the candle in? Do you mind lighting and putting the candle in? My fingers, they've gone stiff and numb again. Uh, you're breaking some of the rules by having me light this candle. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse leans over the table, inserts the birthday candle in the cupcake, then lights the candle with a match. Well, yes, I am breaking some rules today. <laughs> After all, it's my birthday. <laughs> Is that whiskey I smell on your breath? Uh, on my breath? Well, I thought you stopped drinking. Oh, uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, I, I got myself a little cough. <coughs> been I've, been, taking... uh, I've been taking cough medicine. It must have been uh, codeine or something in it. <laughs> it's part of your probation, isn't it? That you quit drinking and attend meetings? <laughs> Cripes, Anna Stell, it's just medicine, uh, you know, for my cough. <coughs> <coughs> Estelle looks at the cupcake with the glowing candle. Well, one cupcake and one candle. Now there's just one more thing I want for my 80th birthday. Is that it? She points at a gift wrapped present. I gotta ask you something. What's that? They, uh... They do any of that video stuff in this room? You know, cameras looking down on you? Oh, if they did, I'd know about it. <laughs> Secrets have a short life in this place. All we have is time, and we fill it up with gossip. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just that uh, um, I just want to, you know, make sure that... Uh, I well, of course you don't want to be blamed for anything. Well, I... <laughs> Just don't need no more trouble than I already got. No, neither of us needs more trouble. <laughs> yeah, lawyers are crawling up my ass every which way. I'm sorry to hear that. That family just filed a damn civil action against me. Oh, I guess then the driver of the other car isn't doing well. Hell, she's just looking to cash in on the accident is all. Probably, I don't know, eating donuts and watching TV while sitting on her can at home. <laughs> You've got a lawyer? 
Uh, same one as handling the problem with the support payments. Oh, you've fallen further behind. Well, how in the hell am I supposed to pay for support for three kids when I ain't got a full-time job? I mean, they ain't even counting alimony to Gwen. What about Trish? Is she all right? No, I don't know where she's at. We got into it the other night. She just up and took off with the baby. Well, I hope you alerted the police. Before she comes and goes like the friggin' wind. Well, my goodness, Jesse, she's got a baby with her. A little baby. Why, what did you name the baby? Oh, I didn't tell you? No. Last time you were here, you said the baby was, well, still in the oven is the way you put <laughs> it. You hadn't decided on a name. Well, it's Estelle. Her name is Estelle. Is it now? Yeah, I insisted. Huh. Well, I'm touched, Jesse. I really am. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you've been so good about keeping me afloat in these bad times, you know. I appreciate it. So I figured I'd name her same as you. How sweet. I was uh, hoping maybe you could advance me a little something just so as I could get through the next couple months. Well, what about the last check, the one for a thousand? Well, I had to pay the lawyer something and then other things come up. Oh, something's always coming up, isn't it? Just need a little to tide me over. Well, it won't be long and then you won't have any worries. Except uh, there's some things got to be paid up in a hurry. <laughs> promise you needn't be concerned. Uh, you gonna blow out that candle? First, I want to open the present you bought me. Jesse pushes the gift toward Estelle. Uh, maybe I ought to lock the door, huh? No, we aren't allowed locks on the doors in case of emergencies. Estelle unwraps her gift. Oh, uh, you need help with that? Uh, no, I can manage. Well, just say so if you do. Estelle removes the revolver from unwrapped box and examines it. Oh, your Uncle Harry had one just like this. <laughs> well, it's a 32 caliber, just oh. like you wanted. <laughs> we used to go down to the firing range where the police did target practice. Harry knew everybody on the force from seeing them in court since he was an attorney. Yeah, too bad he ain't around no more. Could have <laughs> used his help with this bitch in civil suit. Well, that's where I learned to handle one of these. I was a pretty good shot in my time. <laughs> <laughs> that right? Yeah, of course. And now with, with these hands, I, I doubt I could hit the broadside of anybody's barn. <laughs> well, a 32 ain't too much for accuracy. Well, I won't be aiming at anything too hard to hit. Uh, you're going to be able to, you know, Fire that thing, oh, I mean. Do what I have to do? Yeah, I mean, you know, people change their mind. I would never put you to the trouble of getting this for me and then not use it. Well, it wasn't easy, you know. I mean, wasn't about to go to a dealer. <laughs> you know, too many questions, too much paperwork. Instead, I, I hit the street, negotiated for the right thing at the right price. I gave you enough money, didn't I? Well, the guy was asking more, but I beat him down. Well, thank goodness you did. Yeah, there wasn't nothing to spare. What about the bullets? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, two ready to go, just like you asked for. Oh. How come two? Oh, in case of misfire. It does happen, you know. Jesse fumbles in his pocket and takes out bullets, which he pushes toward Estelle. Suppose it could. Uh, you want me to load it for you? Oh, well, that's a very good idea. 
Jesse takes the pistol and inserts two bullets into the cylinder. I hate to, but uh, I'm going to have to run. Uh, guy's waiting on me. Uh, maybe you could give me that advance. Uh, don't you have time for a bit of cupcake? Oh, <laughs> the guy's waiting. But, you know, if you could blow out the candle and make a wish right now, I, I could. Yeah. I must be important business, I take it. Sure, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't be leaving here so quick. Well, then, I'll make a wish and blow out the candle. Estelle blows out the candle. Jesse pushes the loaded revolver toward Estelle. This guy says he's got some word on Trish and the baby. Oh, I thought you weren't worried. Well... It's not like I don't care, you know, especially with Trish running around with a baby on her arm. <laughs> Little Estelle. Yeah, right. <laughs> Estelle cuts cupcake in half and puts slice on plate. Jesse holds out to her. They were here earlier today, Jesse. Trish and the baby. They were here. Well, what the hell is she doing coming here? That, that well, bitch is setting you up for money, right? Right? She was here with the baby asking me for help, Jesse. She was sporting a black eye, black as an olive. She said you gave it to her, said you threw her out of the apartment. <sighs> Hell, I, I mean, you, you should have seen her coming after me. I mean, with, with, a, with a knife it was, coming after me with a knife from the kitchen. I mean, I, I had to defend myself. I had no choice. The baby's name is Danielle. Danny is what Trish calls her, not Estelle, but Danielle. Well, I wanted to make you feel special on your birthday is all. Anyway, uh, I'm planning on changing the baby's name to Estelle. I mean, who wants to be raising a girl and calling her Danny? I mean, it won't take much, just some forms to fill out at City Hall. That's, that's, that's what we was fighting about, Trish and me. She don't want to change the name. Oh, I think Danielle is pretty named for a little girl. And Danny is cute. <laughs> as cute as a button, little nickname. Okay, so you heard Trisha's side of things. Now, don't be thinking she's telling you the truth. Lying comes easy from the lips of that woman, I can tell you. <laughs> it's not the first time Trish and Danielle have been here. Whoa, sneaking behind my back. See, see, that's what I got to deal with. Danielle. Yes, a very pretty name. Well, it's going to get changed to your name, just like I promised. Matter of fact, that's how the name is listed in the will, is Danielle Danny Wentworth. What? In the will? Yes, according to the codicil. C codicil? Uh, isn't that something about making changes? Oh, I didn't remove your name as the primary beneficiary. <laughs> yeah, well, that could screw everything up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and involve time and money, perhaps complications too. So, so my birthday wish is that everything will work out for the best, for everything, for everybody. Here's to that. Hmm. Jesse gulps cupcake. <clears throat> and I know just how it's going to happen. Jesse leans back in the chair, raising hands as Estelle points the revolver at him. Jesus, watch where you're pointing that thing. Oh, I know where it's pointed, Jesse. Thank you for doing what's needed to be done to make my wish come true. Wow. wow, that was like an interesting ending there, of course. <laughs> Phew. Well, I, like, I think that room. was what was going to happen, right? The big old switcheroo. Was that your finger? <laughs> yes. I love it. That was perfect. <laughs> we had to <laughs> do <Courtney. something. laughs> That was your finger. I love it. Yeah. At least I didn't Wonderful. go like this. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Thank you, thank guys. You. Good job, Ed. Nice work, Ed. Um, thank you, Chris and Ben.
both um i miss you all oh my gosh ben's done shows at ensemble too i miss theater in person i have to say that oh my god i can't wait till we get to do it it did i mean all the actors all the actors tonight did a fantastic job i mean again like i can't give the playwrights enough credit but it's like the actors too bringing things to life it's it's a whole nother level which is why i think this like having these readings are wonderful for all these writers let me read a couple of the there's a lot of lol lols <laughs> suspenseful um there's a couple let me get back here oh my goodness chris you are priceless in this role ben you did a great job fabulous play ed this is a wonderful piece ed powerfully composed the actors are fabulous from mary um suspenseful from ann yes there was a moment where i was sitting on the edge of my feet um ed this is a really wonderful story such a wonderful characters and acted so wonderfully from ife Agnes was the LOL, 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 LOL. So apparently she found it very funny. <laughs> um, the dialogue was great. So was the acting. The characters are really interesting and authentic. Uh, the piece was very engaging and humorous. And a little bit of darkness underneath from Jean. Yep, I have to agree. Very, very poignant. Um, very unique and well-developed piece. Excellent writing and actors with a twist from Deb. Kyle, what a twist with some very large eyeball emojis. I love it. Great job, you two um that was compelling i took a breath at the end <laughs> i was too i was like oh my goodness somebody's about to get hurt um love the virtual staging great work ed chris and ben from tim thank you tim great job from isaiah Lo i love how all these inner actor comments are great too all the actors uh supporting one another what great acting and playwriting the ending made my hair stand on end from bernice the actors were ex excellent of course enjoyed the evening all three plays and the actors were terrific from our audience. Again, I think having these three like short plays together is a really wonderful experience because you get quite an array, that's for sure, tonight from pregnancy to historical to very interesting, you know, suspenseful thriller. Um, so we got a nice uh, 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 a buffet of, of scripts this evening, which I thought was great. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. I do wanna share that I, We'll archive each one of these videos um, and I'll throw it up on the page where you also, um, I'll share that link here one more time before we all leave. Let me get that link. Um, but that page, so if for any reason, like you joined tonight and you were a few minutes late and you didn't get to see the first one or the internet was a little bit wonky or you had to walk away and something happened and you couldn't watch um, every moment, these will all get archived and put up on our website. Um, so all 10 of them from the very beginning until now, from the beginning. Um, they're all up on the website. And so you get a chance to go back and look at them again, if you'd like. Some really amazing artists here in Cleveland on the writing side. I mean, on the acting side, obviously there's so much, there's such a rich pool of talent in this town. Um, and we're so lucky to have you all. Um, so I shared that link again. If for any reason you missed any of tonight, um, usually give me about a day or two to get it up there. Um, yeah. But we have an archive of the video. And then of course that page also has a link if you so choose and would love to donate to Ensemble, you're more than welcome to. It's not at all required. Um, we're doing this kind of, you know, just to stay connected with one another. Um, we're hoping to take it to another level. So stay tuned for that information as well. Um, you know, theater companies, it's a very interesting time for theater right now. Thankfully there's some, you know, federal and state and county programs that are helping all of us navigate through, you know, what's going on um, with not being able to mass gather. I've been really impressed to see so many theater communities, um, not just in Cleveland, um, but now I'm actually talking about co-producing a show with a friend of mine who just uh, became an associate artistic director in Atlanta, because what I think is really interesting about what's going on now uh, because of COVID, if there could be a positive that's coming out of this, um, is that like some boundaries have fallen down. You know, we're kind of doing theater from all over the country um, you know, uh, my husband was actually talking to a cohort of his masters who are in Germany um, and uh, all over the country. There's a, a gentleman from Iraq, uh, 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 a young man from Nigeria and how they're doing a, like a master's in, a perf in, art, in arts and cultural performance, breaking barriers. So the idea that we can now co-produce um, with entities that are sometimes on the other side of the globe, which I think is amazing. Um, so really having the opportunity to, to reach out and connect in ways that I don't necessarily know that we would have done 
um, before this happened. Um, and moving forward, even I think when we do go back to doing theater in person, there might be also this wonderful element, you know, that we can expand our audiences far beyond those who just sit in the seats, so to speak. So um, if anybody else wants to share anything or if any of the playwrights or the actors or the audience want to share anything before we go, I did not get a chance to get the list for the 8th of March, but I will get that up there. I have two of the three plays. I'm one final play that we're adding for not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. So please check that uh, link that I just put in the chat um, and it'll let you know what the next three scripts are um, and kind of keep you up to date uh, as to where this whole 10 minute play uh, Zoom series might be going. Um, and then just stay tuned. Um, if you see the planner visit tab, on Ensemble's website. Uh, the two programs that I know we are going to be doing in April and May that will be vir mostly virtual um, will be updated there. Um, and then as we kind of figure out what's going on for maybe doing some stuff in the summer and or maybe back again in person in the fall, um, those will all be most likely updated on our website. Um, so use that as a, a way to stay up to date on what we're doing. And always feel free to give us a phone call or uh, uh, send us an email um, and we'll let you know what's going on. Yeah, I believe everyone here is amazingly talented and I hope I have a free Monday I can stop by again. Yes, please do. And if you have time on Wednesdays and you're a playwright and you want to bring in some pages, it is an open mm -hmm. door. You can come as you want, you can go as you want. Um, so if you are a budding young playwright and you want to bring some pages and share, we are very open um, to uh, accepting all who want to come. This is the first time I was, uh, the first time I saw, Tim, uh, I've seen Chris act. That was uh, wonderful. Thank you, Tim. Um, I'm also glad to see Chris's acting from uh, Anne. So yeah, please, if you feel, uh, let your friends know about our Mondays. Um, and then if you wanna join us on our Wednesdays, cause you're a writer, uh, we just hang out and read each other's plays on Wednesdays. And then we do them here on Monday and share them with everyone. So thanks again for joining us. Be well all, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, um, and we'll see you two weeks from now, if not on um, our Wednesday night Zoom. So thank you again for joining us all, and we'll see you tomorrow, uh, we'll see you two weeks from now. Bye all. Thanks again. Thank you to our actors. Thank you to our playwrights. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> thank you, Kyle. If anybody else wants to share something as you go, <laughs> you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and say something as you leave. Celeste, thank you for this. And everybody did a great job tonight. So thank you for the opportunity. And everybody take care of yourselves. Have a good night. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Ben. What he Ooh. said. Yes, <laughs> what Ben said. What he said. I miss okay. you all. Help. I can't wait till I get to see you again in person. I know. I need hugs. I miss yeah, hugs. I know. Well, I get my shot in a week. The second one. Yay! Yay, And it's so nice to see your face. Not that seeing everyone else's isn't bad. I'm just like, it's been a while since I've seen Ann Cohen's. Hi, Tim. Face. How are you? Good. How have how you been, you? Tim? It's good. so good to see you. Yeah. Well, I'm just, like I said, I'm glad I had a free Monday. And if anyone wants me to read for them, I'm open. My email is still the same. So please, playwrights, please reach out. I will definitely, I'll let them know too. The next time I'll send it, when I send out my next mass email, I'll let them know you're okay, interested cool. for sure. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so you think you'll have this up in two days? About two days? Uh, this video, probably, yeah. Give me okay. at the least 24 hours, at the most 48. It's just okay. how quickly I can get it up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Chris. Yeah. That was fun. Oh my was, goodness. It was. I was like, please. Please let the ending be very what I thought it was gonna be, but be very funny. So I love yeah. that you were wearing I love that you were wearing a black glove on your hand. That was very funny. <laughs> yeah. Help. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. All Bye. right. Bye, Bye. Ife. Bye. Bye. See you guys. I don't later. know how to get off. Oh, there, leave. Leave. Yes, you can leave, but I'm gonna end it in about two seconds. Yeah. So if, yeah. If you don't, I'm gonna stop my live stream. Bye everybody on Facebook.